What's up, Nashville SC fans? It is Jamie Watson here. We had a great time yesterday with Ian Eyre doing a live, so we actually thought we'd do it again today, but uh, we're going to have another guest, not Ian again. Ian did a great job. I mean, that thing was hilarious. His interview yesterday was uh, one of the biggest surprises. I mean, I knew Ian was this awesome guy, but we hadn't gotten a chance to really spend time like that. So him and I talking for 30, 40 minutes yesterday was uh, was the highlight. Everyone had told me how um, how much fun Ian was to get a chance to have a beer with. I hadn't done that yet, and we got to do that yesterday, albeit uh, virtually, um, thanks to our friends at Fat Bottom Brewing. But uh, I was like, we need to do this again, but let's do it again with somebody that um, somebody that I know, somebody that um, maybe I can share a few more. Uh, inside stories with, and um, I think you'll see that today when we get a chance to uh, to chat with our very special guest, Captain Dax McCarty. Um, you know, being a part of the TV broadcast is uh, something that I'm very excited about this year, but also um, getting a chance to uh, be in the same city again with a good buddy of mine, Dax. Um, this is a guy that I've known for a while. He's uh, he's going to be joining us here momentarily. On the Instagram live, we want to say thank you everybody for for tuning in. Just waiting for him to uh, to get into the room now. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the chat with the CEO Ian Air yesterday. That dude's got some stories. By the way, I uh, I learned uh, just the other day that he was in the Navy, the Royal Navy, at 16. Did that for like a decade. Traveled all around the world. I mean, just wild stories. Uh, we've got that up on the website. Uh, www.nashvillesc.com. You can go check that out. Um, you can check that out on the YouTube page as well. And because we got so in depth on some of the stories, we actually didn't get a chance to uh, fully go into it. Um, we actually had to take a <laughs> intermission, if you will. We're gonna pick that up uh, again next week. And um, yeah, that was a, that was a good time. It was funny the correlation of how many uh, beers we drank. Uh, to how uh, much laughter and how better the stories got. I don't know, weird, uh, weird correlation there. Um, somebody that I can tell you uh, is an awesome person to have a beer with is this uh, this guy that will be joining me uh, here in just a moment. We're gonna see if he's in the room here. Oh, I think he's here. All right, let's see if we can uh, send him. Add real quick. Let's see. Thank you everybody for joining in. Let's see. There hey, he is. Buddy. There's What's the up? man. Look at you. That uh, well, that beard is social distancing itself from everything else on your face, huh? Did you notice uh, anything different about me these days? <laughs> oh, man, I would ask how things are going, but clearly we can see how it's going over there. Hey. Listen, man, I, uh, I decided I haven't had my, my mustache in quite a, a long time. Um, my wife threatens me constantly. If I ever bring it back, it's going to be a problem. And so I figure, Hey, when we're quarantining, why not bring the mustache back? She's already sick of me. So let's just make it worse. Hey, Ian, Ian came in yesterday, um, with a full on, just oh, luscious, yeah? full beard. And, uh, <laughs> I told him, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm on day 15 of this thing. It's, uh, it, it's not, it's not going so well. So I, I can't compete with Ian's beard, but. I, I bet you I, I can rock a mustache better than you that. You can compete with Burt Reynolds and his mustache. Um, I, need hey guys. More, I need a few more weeks. It's pretty it's pretty light. I know it's tough to see for our friends that are watching, but. I think if you get closer and maybe hold the angle up where we can see a little bit more up your nose than what you are. Yeah, there we go. That's the one. <laughs> oh, man, I've been, I've been in self-isolation a long time, buddy. Way too long, man. This is why I waited a couple of weeks in to be able to to call you on Instagram Live because – I knew uh, the longer you've been in isolation, the funnier you probably think I would be. So my jokes no, get better that no, way. You're never funny, but I might, I might be a little bit more open. It's been tough to, uh, to get around some friends and, and to get outside. So now that we have all our friends with us on Instagram live, I mean, I figure let's just go for it, man. Like, let's just talk crazy. Let's do stuff. it. <laughs> let's, let's share some stories. Uh, we'll dive a little bit deeper into who is Dax McCarty and how you got into uh, the role of being captain with Nashville SC. Ooh. But we'll also steer clear of soccer at times, and we are going to uh, ask some off-the-wall questions. Um, and speaking of off-the-wall questions, if you've got some, 
Put them in those little comments right there. I mean, we're seeing things like, what is your favorite ice cream flavor, Dax? I mean, these are the, these are the hard-hitting questions Lehigh. people want to know. Lehigh, I see you in there, buddy. Hey, former uh, UNC, Eric Lehigh. Another UNC legend coming to join us all the way from across the pond. I miss you, pal. The dad tash is strong. That's right. Um, yeah, I mean, look, send these, send these questions in. We're gonna, we may just stop the conversation halfway through and ask these, and you, uh, you may or may not get an answer. I've already asked Dax what his favorite ice cream flavor was, but he didn't answer that one. Hey, buddy, sorry. I, I, just keep going, dude. I got to let the dog out. The dog is really – that's. Hey, a guest happy. appearance already. Paul, you want to go outside? Let's go outside. Come on. Let's go outside. So this is one half of the famous duo Koji and Bali. Oh, there's the other one. Right there. There's Koji and Bali. Hey, they guys. have their own Instagram page, Dax. They, they do. Is that true? They do. They do. Yeah, ask my wife. I'm just going to leave the door open and let them roam. I'm back. There we okay. go. That's awesome. You've, uh, you've got a full house these days. You've got uh, how many dogs now? Just two. Just two. But just when we were in Chicago, just... um, I was a landlord to my sister-in-law. Um, uh, my wife's twin sister moved in with us, and she brought her golden doodle, Luke, with her. So That's we had, right. We had, we had, I, I, it, was, it was a really fun house in Chicago. I had my wife, my sister-in-law, three dogs, and, and a newborn um that was that was something i'll tell you that much <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what i crashed on the couch many a nights there uh it was a great setup you did uh, you did yeah haven't haven't been invited to the new one yet um but we'll get we'll get there when, when it's all when it's true. all don't, don't lie to our viewers you were invited you were invited over um and uh i think you you bailed for some reason. I, uh, maybe it was maybe it was you needed to take the kids to Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. I'm not sure. I know what it was. I had to relace all of my tennis shoes that night and uh, priorities. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> anyways, you uh, you guys are in the process of actually. Uh, you're really. I mean, you're all in with this Nashville thing. You guys are building your own house right now. Is that right? Um. Yes and no. I'd say that you took um, it on a little bit halfway through yeah, the project, like, right? There's it's a crazy story. So when I when I got when I got traded. Um, my wife and I were really excited, obviously. And, uh, my wife went to college with a guy who's from Nashville and he ended up after college moving back to Nashville to, uh, get into real estate and be a developer. Um, so he's been developing a lot of really cool houses around the Nashville area. And when my wife reached out to him, she was like, Hey, we're moving to Nashville, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, Oh, I have this really cool house that, you know, you guys can rent if you need a place to stay. And so we were like, cool, perfect. Awesome. Um, and so as we were, you know, dealing with the team real estate agent, trying to find a permanent place to live, uh, a few weeks into it, her friend was basically like, Oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm building this house in edge Hill and it's like 75% done. Um, what do you want to come look at it? Do you want to see what it looks like? Maybe like, it was so cool. Cause like the bones of the house were already in, but like they hadn't done any appliances, no countertops, no backsplashes, no floors. So it's basically all the fun details of the house, which my wife is absolutely obsessed with. Um, and so it's kind of like her dream to try to put together all these details. And so we were like, this is the absolute perfect situation. Not only is this guy giving us a place to live and rent month to month, but he's also building a house and giving us basically first right of refusal in an awesome area. We love Edge Hill. Um, if any of our, our viewers right now have been to Barcelona, love that restaurant. Uh, it's right down the street from Barcelona, right down the street from Taco Mamacita, beautiful area. So we're hoping, fingers crossed, it'll be done in the next month. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're at right now. We're in my buddy's, we're in my buddy's rental house. And I have to tell you, I have all of our furniture and all of our stuff in storage. And this guy, the stuff that he has around the house is just truly unbelievable. You want to like what? Tour? Yeah, I do want a tour. Like what he's got. And keep the keep the comments coming. We got Kevin Egan, commentator for Atlanta United, in the house. Here. Gonna, we got look, tons well, of supporters. Of all, let's see your. Let's see what you've got here. What's the What's the one thing that that stands out to you first that you you're like the viewers got to see this? You wouldn't believe. What's in this uh, house that you're uh, renting? The, the one thing that stands out is you have this like little taxidermy, like mini pig <laughs> on, top this, on top, on top of this like dresser with like all kinds of weird stuff. You got, have you like, named this them? Is, so, so my mother-in-law actually said that this pig looks like my dog, Bali. Bali, come here, girl. I'm sorry. Do, what do we think? Do we think that? Pig oh, looks no. Like Bali? <laughs> 
is that devastating or what? So this guy's got this like ugly pig in here that apparently looks like Bali. Um, he's got all kinds of weird stuff in here. I'm I'm not gonna say what this is right here, but I think we can all guess. He's got little little uh, dolls and trinkets everywhere. Let's go. Let's go over here. He's got some interesting artwork. He's got some horns laying around the house. Um, I, I, I tell you what, dude. There's some. There's some really interesting stuff over here. My wife over there. Say hi, babe. Hey, how's it going? Look at. Look. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, there she is. Jen, I, give I us just, a wave. Say hello. Yeah. Anybody? Any? Uh, any? Any GW Bush fans over here? I mean. There we go. I just, that it's is just a, a so, wide it's so, array. It's so, it's so, it's, it's so, it's so random. Like, I'm, I'm just like, what is all this stuff? Oh my goodness. <laughs> none, of, none of this is mine, by the way. So I, I'm, you know, it's a, it's a nice house, but when you're in here, you're kind of just like, all right, you don't really feel settled. You know, you don't really feel at home because you got George W. Bush staring at you. You got this weird like taxidermy pig and you have an 11 and you have an 11 month old running around the house like a madman trying to like tear everything down. So look, man, we're, we're settled, but we're not really settled. Um, so it's been a, it's been a really fun, interesting couple of months. I'll say that. <laughs> well, that is uh that is definitely a good start to this uh, Instagram live. And, and I just want to know, are you, are you going to be truthful with the viewers at home and tell them what that thing was that you didn't mention? That you said, I think we all know what it was. I think there are just some people in the questions that are saying, we didn't know what that thing was, Dax. Do you want to tell us? Um, it's, go, uh, go walk back over. Walk back over and show us what it was again. Uh, I can't. I'm put, you okay. got, I've never seen you redder. <laughs> what is that thing? I just went on a workout. That's why. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this, this was told to, to me by the guy that was uh, li living here. Um, th this is a, a, a whale appendage. <laughs> I don't know if, if I, I think I think Instagram might cut me off if I say what it is, but you guys, it's 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 very weird. I don't know. I love the guy. He's obviously doing us a lot of favors, but he's got some really interesting collectibles that I don't think uh, many people would have. You told me that's going to go over your mantle at your new house, so I don't know why you're mind everybody. <laughs> that's going in the man cave. I'm actually going to steal that. <laughs> well, look. Um... We've started on an absolute high. I don't know how we're going to continue this yeah, let's pace keep here. It going, dude. I told the people we'd have some fun here, so we're going to have some fun. All right. Well, then let's just uh, let's keep it going because I mean, yesterday we got this full uh, full blown um, life story of Ian Air from the beginning. You've got tons of stories. We've got tons of stories. Um, but I, I guess we'll keep it. We'll, maybe we'll go uh, backwards on this. We'll we'll start kind of for more recent. And we'll work our way back into uh, into the early years because you've got some good stories to tell. Um, from your playing days, the other day you picked your top five aside players, <laughs> and I almost refused to do this with you today because I feel like I was um, a bit hard done being left out of your top uh, five that you've ever played with. Do you remember who those five were? I do. I do. Okay. I apologize. I I'm sorry, dude. I told you on Twitter it came down between you and Thierry. Um, and why was both, it? Why was it Thierry over me? Both wonderful careers. I, I had to. I had to. I mean, like Thierry Henry has accomplished a lot in his career, but can he say that he's the only guy in the history of the world to score in every single division in U.S. Soccer? <laughs> can he say that? He can't. No, he you can't can... because he hasn't been cut by enough teams to be able to say that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You can say that. And so that's why you had such an upper hand on him. But then I actually was like, I was like, damn it. Thierry won the World Cup. That probably mm. put him over the top, right? And yeah, so, that's fair. Look, man, I mean, you can't really argue with that team. You had Thierry, you had David Ferreira, who if people don't know, this guy. No, he, he was, was so good. He, I think he was a, a he was so under the radar and no one had any idea who he was. I didn't have any idea who he was. And this guy came and just lit MLS on fire in 2010. He had an unbelievable season. I think we went 19 games unbeaten that year. We lost an MLS cup final. Um, he scored an MLS cup. I mean, this guy was incredible. He was one of the most fun attacking midfielders I ever played with because he was just so underrated. And even though he won MVP that year, I still felt like he was underrated. And then you had, I mean, you can't really argue with Basti. Schweinsteiger, yeah. 
Um, the guy that can kind of do it all, do everything. Probably the best all-around soccer player I've ever played with, the best all-around footballer I've ever played with in terms of a guy that you could put him anywhere on the field and he would be able to do it at a world-class level. Um, and then George John. You know you know, Big George. He the was awesome. Was, the guy was incredible. Not only did he have an amazing head of, like, long, flowing locks, uh, 6'5", like, he was a midfielder in college, so he had good feet, strong. Him and Ugo Ahemelu, apologies to all the guys I played with, but him and Ugo Ahemelu were the best center back pairing I played with, and they were – Truly, truly incredible. And uh, I could have picked either one of those guys. And then the GOAT, Nick Romando. I played with him in national team. I never played with him in, at, at the club level. But I don't think you can argue with many of those guys, Jamie. I really don't. You you were close. Well, I tried to. Yeah, you were close. You were close. Um, but ultimately, the World Cup medal for Thierry, he, he beat you out. Slightly beat the uh, USL uh, pro medal that I got in 2011. Slightly beat that out. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's a good side. Um, yeah. If you had to, if you had to name um, the top three games that you played in in your career, you got your top five players. What about the top three games you played in? What would those be? Dude, that is such an impossible question to answer. It's so hard to. Can I cheat? I'm gonna cheat here. We're gonna okay. go. I'm gonna cheat, and I apologize, but I'm gonna go top three MLS games I played in. Okay. And then I'm gonna go top three non MLS games I played in because okay, okay. I don't I just, it's I'll just allow there's it. just too many and I'm so like coming from like where I came from like basically no one giving me a chance to make it I was like you know I've done some cool stuff so I want to brag a little bit um top three MLS games let's see number one most memorable game I ever played in was New York Red Bulls NYCFC Yankee Stadium seven one was it? Seven zero. Seven zero. Yikes! Yikes! Pretty, yeah, pr pretty, pretty incredible. I will, you know, I don't score many goals. Um, I scored two two headers off corner kicks, and I think actually ever since that game, every opposing team has marked me with probably one of their best players in the air because of that game. And so now that's why I don't score off corner kicks anymore. It's devastating. Um, so I'm that sorry, game... my phone my phone cut out there. I just heard a whole bunch of garbage in my ears. <laughs> so that the game five, was... eight and a half monster that in the ears, what was... they call you. Oh, dude, that game was just – there was just nothing better. That game at Yankee Stadium, all of our fans there, um, that was really, really memorable. Um, another game that I will never forget, uh, all, all Red Bull games, a lot of memorable Red Bull games. Um, the first – trophy that we ever won in club history and my first major trophy if you want to call it that the supporter shield uh 2013 at our at red bull arena five to two against chicago fire in front of our fans seeing the reaction and just being a part of that moment was so special did um, you score that game too i did not i did not i did not score that game i thought you had uh, the, the header from the uh like the penalty spot right at, off of a corner that was another one. Another that was, goal. That was sorry. A different header. Sorry. Sorry. I, <laughs> it's, it's tough to keep them in track. But then I'll say, so it wasn't just victories. Another, like one of my most memorable, memorable games I played in was actually in 2010 MLS cup final um, against, uh, against Colorado Rapids. And we actually lost. And Led my, by who? The, the opposing coach that day was my current head coach, Gary Smith, who uh, let's just say, you know, he's, he's given me a little, little banter, a little crap for that. Um, I know. gave you crap because you had me you, – you suggested, hey, you come up to Toronto and you watch the game. I'll get you a ticket. We're going right. to win MLS Cup. It'll be a great time. And it was that negative was 10 degrees outside. The <laughs> coldest game in MLS history until the, um, right. until the Minnesota United opener in 2017, the snow game. But right. I sat there at BMO Field in the stands because you didn't give me anything in the suites. We're not going to talk about that. Or <laughs> people were warm. I was just in front of that. And uh, I had everything layered up. You could only see, like, my eyes. That was it. And I, had the, I wish I would have covered my eyes That's with the way that you played that buddy. day. You were, you're, a good, you're a good friend for going to that game. That was the most miserable game. I mean, the, the, the circumstances, it wasn't even snowing. It was, like, freezing rain. Windy. Sideways rain. Cold. Windy. I think that was the last MLS Cup they played at a neutral location. And they were like, nah, we're not doing this again at a yeah. neutral location. So that was, that was a really memorable game because – um, I think, you know, it made me realize, like, 
how how difficult in MLS it is to get to MLS Cup and then losing in extra time the way that we did off like a crazy own goal. I don't know if people remember that, but like Matt Kanji tried to cross it, got crushed, tore his ACL. It yep. deflected off my, my guy George and into like the top corner. And like that's how you lose the, one of the biggest games that you're ever going to play in. Um, and it's also, it's also a memorable game because it's, I, I haven't been back to MLS Cup since. And it's just – it's a lot of perspective and – how difficult it is to win in this league. And it doesn't matter what you do in the regular season, winning in the playoffs is a totally different animal. And so I know all too well from my Red Bull days, how you can have a fantastic regular season, but once you get to those moments in the playoffs, it just, you need everything to go your way. You need to play well, you need to get a little bit of luck, you need to get a call to go your way. And, and we've just, you know, it's been, it's been tough. So go, go, that MLS cup game will always stick with me until I get back with Nashville. Yeah, I, I can imagine. So I, I remember it like it was yesterday, even though it was about a decade ago now, which is crazy to think. Um, and somebody else that was there that's also here in the comments now. I don't know if you saw it a moment ago. Is that, is that Pops? Is he in That's there? Dart McCarty's in there. We've got uh, a couple of legends going in the uh, in the chat here. Dart hey, McCarty, Dart. Dax McCarty, he's in here. Someone, someone turn off my old assistant coach, Eric Garrick's notifications. Eric Garrick's in here as well. Ian in air. I saw somebody say, Ian Air, we should bring him back. Who's this Dax guy? And I think the the, the handle was uh, Ian Air USA. So, I, I don't know. Maybe it's him. But, uh, Ian, come on, man. We've got, let's have, we've a, got let's some... have a beard off. A beard <laughs> <laughs> bring back Ian Air. That's what the people are chanting <laughs> in the comment section, huh? Dart McCarty is here. Um, I don't want right. to. I don't want to stray away from um, your story about the top three games that are non-ones. So, let's finish that. And we'll come back in and we'll talk about Dart because right, he is one of the most right. amazing human beings I've ever met. So Listen, talk to me about I, your – Look, we both tend to ramble and talk a lot. You especially ramble, just nonsense constantly. I'll say I'm going to let, let this go longer than 30 minutes. I don't mind. So if we need to be a little longer than 30 minutes, that's fine. But yeah. non-MLS games, let's see. Okay, this is kind of cheating, but this was such a cool moment um, for me. Going and playing in Basti's testimonial game, Chicago Fire against Bayern Munich at the Allianz Arena, 75,000 people. It was insane. Truly insane. I don't think – you don't you, – you always understand how big these personalities are, guys like Thierry, guys like Basti. Um, but you don't really understand it until you are there in Germany and you're just like, wow, Basti cannot leave the hotel without being bombarded. He needs security. Um, he's basically royalty. And then you go to like the Allianz and like they call him football got for a reason, right? So you have a testimonial game uh, in the middle of Bayern's season where it's on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday and you get 75,000 people there. And like Bayern is like throwing out like their big time players. And you're like thinking, okay, like they obviously like they're playing an MLS team. Like they kind of have to still put on a show. Um, so you're, you're getting pretty much as good as they've got. And so we don't have to talk about the score. That wasn't important. Um, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Uh, we lost by a slim margin. But being, a, being involved in that moment, in that game, um, I was captain of the fire. And I'll never forget, Basti played for us in the first half, and he played for Bayern in the second half. And he, uh, he gave me – I gave him the armband so he could walk out and do his whole thing, which was a no-brainer. And then at halftime on the field, he gave it back to me when he was switching to Bayern Munich. And it was just, like, such a cool moment, man, and, and, and one that you just don't – you, you, you kind of – you kind, can't really explain it, right? It's one of those moments where you're just like, wow, like one of the most legendary players in the game is, is giving me the armband in front of 75,000 people. And even though uh, the game isn't going well on the scoreboard, um, just being a part of that was such a fantastic moment. So that was one. Um, my first national team cap that I ever got was a, a moment that I'll never remember. It's ridiculously special to me. Bob Bradley. Uh, the game was in Bratislava. Slovakia. Bratislava, that's right. Um, yeah, if anyone's ever seen Euro Trip, I think Bratislava makes an appearance. <laughs> and not the most flattering of ways, but like just making your national team debut – um on the field in a in a big european game like just it was just a friendly but it still meant so much to me and still meant so much to my family and um that was a game i'll never forget we lost 1-0 i think uh i think marek hamzik maybe scored a penalty against us i'm not sure it was 1-0 um He's good at and, and yeah and then the other game that I'll, I'll throw out there that i'll never forget is 
It happened in Nashville at Nissan Stadium. Uh, the day, the last time a U.S. national team has actually qualified for the Olympics was my team, 2007, 2008. We qualified for the Olympics in Nissan Stadium, um, beating That's Canada right. 3-0. Unbelievable experience. Um, went, ended up going to the Olympics uh, because of that. And that was obviously a, a surreal moment in my career. And, and you're an Olympian. I mean, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard anything to can happen if Dax McCarty is considered an Olympian. Hard, hard to believe a guy with this amazing <laughs> is an Olympian, but it is true. It is a fact. And so, man, just some some really cool games and some cool moments I'll never forget. That's why yeah, I, I just picked three. I had to kind of give you, you know, I had to cheat a little bit. Sorry. Well, I mean, uh, I think Nashville SC dot report is saying it best. They're saying flex, and you are flexing the fact that you are an Olympian. I don't, uh, I don't blame you. I, <laughs> I'd actually, I, I'm surprised you didn't make me introduce you as captain of Nashville SC and Olympian <laughs> Dax McCarty when we started this. Um, just ridiculously cool, and and I know that um, as we're getting some good questions in here from oh, uh, and comments yeah, from people. Eric, Eric Avila, thanks. For you got a lot of former teammates in here that uh, uh, are just dying to. Just good to get me to tell stories that uh, I don't know if you're comfortable telling stories to the world. I'm not comfortable telling any stories about Eric Avila. Yeah, we uh-huh. look. We want to. We both like our jobs. We want to. <laughs> we don't want. We don't. We want. Don't want our accounts suspended from Instagram <laughs> telling those stories. Uh, that's ridiculous. Those, those are really cool. And I know somebody that's been uh, influential throughout the way for you. Uh, we'll, we'll pull it away from soccer for a minute, although it does tie into soccer a little bit later on in life. Uh, we mentioned him a moment ago, the man, the myth, the legend, Dart McCarty, your dad. Um, also, fun fact, my dad is in the comments. He's he's in here as well, too. Both Papa pops. In there. Pop, Papa in there. Wada's in there. Mama Watson's in here, of course. We should, we should do this every day. Why yeah, not? we yeah we got nothing else to do right now. <laughs> uh, tell us tell us about uh, Dart. Give us the, the cliff note version of who Dart McCarty is and why specifically in the last Five years, seven years, um, the legend has grown even more about this incredible human being. Yeah, my dad's, he's, he's uh, I don't want his head to get too big. Mom, if you're watching, <laughs> X out. Um, Cynthia, don't let him see this. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my dad. Justin, your brother too, don't let him, just keep it all reeled in for Dart here. <laughs> my, my dad is a big influence in obviously my entire life, but especially with my career, he's the guy who pushed my brother and I to, to, to want more, right, and, and to try to be better and he always was the one that pushed me to, to follow my dreams. And every time that a coach told me I was too small or too slow, um, he said, it doesn't matter. Just if you want it, you know, it's up to you to try to achieve it. And so he pushed me from a young age to continue to try to be the best I could. Um, he's a huge influence in my life and my career. And when we were in Dallas, actually, he um, – and this was a guy – I mean, he was, like, invisible. He was, like, invincible to me. Like, nothing could touch my dad. Um, he was a Top Gun pilot in the Navy, like the movie Top Gun was loosely based on his life, the character Maverick. I don't know if people know that about him, um, but I'm not exaggerating, I promise, but he was No, no, that's, that's all. I mean, basically if we had to pick one person, Tom Cruise and Dart, it it makes sense. It's it's like this. He's, he's not a Scientologist though. Uh, (laughs) apart from that. Yeah. (laughs) He, uh, no, he was a huge influence on my life and career and he was so, um, he had such an interesting life too, being in Top Gun and being a pilot and, and being at the, the top of the game in terms of, you know, what you can do in the Navy and being a pilot. And then, you know, it's funny because he was such a big influence on my, my career and, and, and for soccer. And he actually had no idea what soccer was. He grew up in a, a super small town in, in Missouri where they played football, they played basketball, they played baseball. That's it. Um, and so when my brother and I started playing soccer, he was just a huge influence in it. And so when I turned pro, he was there with me through everything. He was there with me through the draft. He was there my first few games in Dallas. Um, you know, he was there through it all. And so when he called me one day and told me he had been diagnosed with throat cancer, um, that was really, really hard for me to take. And I'll never forget what he said to me. He was like, listen, Dax, he's like, it doesn't matter. I- I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the most aggressive treatment I possibly can go for, and I'm going to beat this thing. So you don't have to worry. And naturally, you always worry, right? Anytime you hear the word cancer, it's always – um, it's always really scary. It's always a really heavy moment, right? And so um, as soon as my dad told me that, that I had nothing to worry about and that he was going to beat this and he was going to do the most aggressive treatment he could possibly do to beat it as fast as he could, he wasn't lying. And it kicked his ass. He did chemo uh, as much as they 
possibly let him. And, and I think he went into remission within, I'm not sure, maybe seven or eight months. Right. And so, um, you know, he, he did this blog and, and he did all this stuff and he talked a lot about life and, and the meaning of it. And it just, after that, it really resonated, right. That, that I was, I knew I was lucky to be able to do what I did, but man, just to, to see how he attacked something as big as, as cancer and as serious as that, um, that puts things really into perspective for you. Right. And so then you have that, you have the birth of my son and just seeing how good of a grandfather he is. I mean, all, all of it rolled into one. It's just, uh, he's a really, really inspiring human being. Yeah, he is. And it's uh, weird how life sometimes comes um, full circle. Um, you know, my dad ended up getting throat cancer as yep. well uh, soon after your dad had it. So your mom, Cynthia, was great with my mom, Janet. My dad got a lot of inspiration from Dart. And similar to your dad, I, I mean, I had the same feeling with you. And I remember having the conversation with my dad and he said, there's only one of two ways this goes. Either cancer beats me or I beat cancer right. and I'm not losing. And I remember, similar to you, we had so many of these conversations over the years about just if they can do that, we can push through anything. I mean, we, anything. we were we were ups and downs with soccer, with life, with, with how right. things were going. And, and like you said, it just puts it in perspective that that's so much more than what it is that we're fortunate enough to get to do. Or I did get to do what you're still getting to do. And, uh, man, he's an incredible human being. So give us an update on Dart. How is, uh, how is he doing right now? Dart's fantastic. Dart's living, living the retired life, living the dream. Gets his he made it for the opener. He was there for the opener. Gets his CAT scan every six months. And I gotta say, Nashville, you, uh, you got the best of him. You got the best. Of him. <laughs> I mean, my dad was out until like two or three in the morning. I think every night he was here. He was in those country bars, and and it was it, it was a role reversal. I actually had to reprimand him in the morning and tell him that he wasn't allowed to be out that late the night before. He, <laughs> About um, full circle, right? You're the one uh, telling him Ted. Full you circle. Out I gotta, I gotta bring these guys in. My wife was dropping the, the, my wife was dropping off her mom, um, her mom's husband, and my parents downtown Nashville at the bars, and then coming home, and it was just like that. <laughs> Relax, huh? Like, give it a rest. All right. That's he's, hilarious, man. He's great, you, uh... man. He's in rem He's been in remission for close to ten years now, and um, the man is living like he's like in college. He's loving life. He's loving I he life. Does, I think he does a little bit of gardening. <laughs> 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 this guy is uh dart is is the man and uh i think we um we you know I, I speak for everybody here in the comments that are saying dart you don't have to pay for a beer next time the roadies uh have a tailgate uh I, whenever i'm around dart i don't ever want him to pay for a beer with me too i love that man and uh and thanks for sharing uh that story with us um i wanted to um kind of tie back in we talked about the uh the coolest uh games you played in if we get back into kind of the soccer talk here because that's your your stories man are awesome i want to ask you about you mentioned bratislava earlier and this got the thought going in my head um about some of the coolest places you've been you, yeah. you mentioned beijing with the olympics oh. um you know what are the i would say the top three coolest places or stadiums soccer has taken you oh man um i would say beijing was absolutely one of those we didn't 2008, we actually didn't get to play in the bird's nest. Um, but one of the top five coolest experiences of my entire life, soccer or not soccer, was the opening ceremonies uh, of the Beijing Olympics. And believe it or not, I got to call out some of my teammates here that were on that team. Because we had a game two days after the opening ceremonies in a completely different city, about two hours away, there was actual talk and, like, votes going on about if we should even go to the opening ceremonies. No. Was like, I was like – are we, am I taking crazy? <laughs> what is going, like, how can we actually say that we shouldn't go to the opening ceremonies of the Olympics? I mean, this is like a dream for like every kid growing up. And it's like, we, we ended up like, get like basically taking a vote. And once people, I think, started to realize how big of a deal it was, um, it started to be like, okay, like, this is ridiculous. Like, let's Common go. sense kicked in. Yeah, exactly. So, so we, we ended up going to uh, we ended up going to the opening ceremonies and being in the bird's nest and being a part of that and like meeting all like meeting Kobe and like Dwight Howard and like LeBron and all these all guys. of Team Dirk, USA yeah Dirk Nowitzki like all these guys and actually um, the coolest part about it was you would think that all those NBA guys would have been the most popular guys there and especially Yao Ming this was during like some of his like prominent years in the NBA Roger Federer absolute legend. Dude, the Swiss team had to actually, in the middle of the track, when we had all gone through the opening ceremonies, the Swiss team had to form 
like a Swiss barrier of bodies around him because he was being bombarded with so many people that wanted to meet him and take a picture with him. And it just got like, I think a little overwhelming. And so the Swiss, it was like the, the Swiss wall and no one could break through. Cause it was just like, all right, guys, like give it a rest. You probably taken a thousand pictures at that point, but it just shows you like what a goat he is and like how he transcends all sports. And he's just like such a classy human being, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get a chance to meet him? I didn't. That was after the wall. The Swiss wall. You, so you were the guy that got shut out by the I wall. I got huh? shut out and I was very <laughs> upset. But I was hanging out with Dirk. I was hanging out with Nowitzki, dude. That was cool. And you were playing in Dallas at the time, so he was like excited to see a familiar face. Yeah. Yeah. He I've was excited. Seen, he, he was I've a Dax McCarty fan. I've seen an absolute legend flash across the comments. Wow. The content king of MLS, Stephen Keel. Stephen Keel's in the house. Not Look at he's this. definitely not the coolest teammate I've ever played with. <laughs> it was, Keel, if, if you were, you'd be hosting the IG Live. I mean, come you on, know, man. You know who the coolest teammate I ever played with was, Jamie? You answered it right there. Done. Next question. <laughs> uh, this guy, huh? Ah. He thinks he is. Who was it? Um, Jamie's is a distant second to a guy. I'm not going to say Alan Gordon. That would People be are wanting Alan Gordon stories in the are. comments and as I'm well. I'm not going to say Alan because, you know, he, he told some lies uh, on BSI the podcast. If you guys haven't listened to it, listen to it. But the stories he tells about me are absolute nonsense. The Benny Sal Ike podcast. It's a good one. It's a it's a must listen. Like along with the call I up extra time radio, that, it's I'm in there. I'm not happy. I'm not happy about Gordo the lies he spewed on that podcast. <laughs> well. um, but my best teammate I ever had was a guy in New York named Timu Tainio. He was a Finnish guy, defensive midfielder, absolute legend. One of my my favorite guy I ever played with. This guy was. Uh, First of all, he's an incredible player. Second of all, off the field, the best night out you could imagine. This guy drank like a fish, and he was so funny, hilarious, great dude. Just to loving talk. life in New York. Just was... oh, he loved it. He loved it. I'm not, I never thought people from Finland were so cool until I met him. So you've met a lot of players from around the world, and you played around the world. You've got to have some cool memorabilia. Right? I mean, you, do you collect things? Or are you? Uh... I do. I do. I'm a big. I, I don't know if people saw. My wife posted on uh, a video on Instagram of my my man cave, and you saw it. You actually saw it when you came over and, and used me for my my man cave, and then left at early in the morning. Cheapest pretty Airbnb sure I, I've ever had. Those great. Pretty sure. I, pretty sure I bought you dinner, and you didn't Venmo me. So I'm gonna need that twenty bucks. See the way my Venmo account is set up. It takes three to five business days to get there. So I'm a big I'm a big jersey collector and uh, I I have no shame I have no shame in going and asking players that I have a lot of respect for and have done a lot of cool things in their career but I told you this because I'm in a temporary house I got all my crap in storage so I don't have that much cool stuff around here I got a I got a taxidermy pig um, a whale <laughs> a whale appendage uh, <laughs> a George Bush you guys saw all that but actually really cool thing that I do have. Um, is right here. I got it downstairs. It is the jersey from the uh, from the Portland Timbers game where it was my Wondolowski moment. And for those of you who don't know, Wando, he actually had his name spelled wrong in one of the national team games. And my name on this jersey, I didn't even notice it until after the game. My name on this jersey is not spelled wrong. It's just not not proper, you know? Oh, the no. C, oh, the no. little C <laughs> always comes before the big C. Always. Oh, no. Always. And so, you, so, and you wore that I, in the game. I wore this in the game, and I had no idea. And I was getting crap from it. I had a bunch of texts afterward, like, "Dude, did you change the spelling of your last name or what?" It was and only so, on ESPN, huh? So this is, yeah, it was. It was only on ESPN. And so this is a jersey that I wanted to keep for my my collection, and I thought it was a cool moment, right? And so it actually um, ended up they so to help with the tornado fund. Obviously, you know, you guys all know that a tornado kind of ripped through Nashville and in the week leading up to that game. Right. right. It was really devastating, but there was just to see the outreach from everyone. Um, what the Portland Timbers did was incredible. Um, uh, donating, they donated like $15 donating of the proceed of all their season general mission tickets. Sales. Yeah. I mean, just incredible. And the response from guys on my team to help and volunteer. Um, and so my Jersey was up for auction and uh, someone in the Twitter comments was like, Hey, 
my boss owns a bar in East Nashville that got affected by the tornado, wanted to bid on Dax's jersey, but the jersey online is actually spelled right. We want the one spelled wrong. And I saw that and I was <laughs> like, this is bigger than any collectible I can keep. Um, I sent the girl a message and I said, what was your boss? What was the highest amount your boss was willing to bid for this jersey? Whatever it is, I have the jersey. I'll match that bid and I'll deliver the jersey to the bar myself. And so she wow. was like, incredible. Um, boss was like, let's do it. 500 bucks. So we both did it. $1,000 raised. And obviously social distancing. I haven't delivered the jersey yet, but I'm going to deliver it to that bar. Um, and I hope that they will put it up in a frame and, and give it a uh, – Cause it's one of a kind. There's no, there's no Jersey like that out there with my name spelled incorrectly. So hopefully That's so they'll be cool. able to, to deliver it to them uh, in the next couple of weeks and, and maybe get a, a free adult beverage to go along with it. Do you know the name of the, uh, of the bar? I do. I do. I would have to, it's, it's in my, it's in my, my Instagram messages. I don't want to butcher it. So yeah, I'll, no, I'll, uh, I'll tweet That's it out cool. for, for everyone watching. We'll go have a we'll, – we'll, we'll, we'll do a thing whenever you go give it to him. We'll, we'll have well, a, I'll, you know what? We'll do this tomorrow, and I'll just – I'll get the name of the bar tomorrow. So I'll tell done. you tomorrow. There we go. Can I, can I show you my coolest piece of memorabilia? I actually have it with me. I, I can I show it, it to you? I, I would love that. Oh, yeah, of so course. I brought, I brought it with me. This is the coolest memorabilia I ever got. <laughs> it's a Dax McCarty bobblehead <laughs> that my agent of a decade uh, sent well, me I, this. After you left being an I tell agency, you what, I tell you what, you know, Eddie what? Rock, it sucks. Give me this thing. It sucks when your bobblehead is better looking than you are in real life. I mean, you're not wrong. Look at that. Who did? I mean, you got the stash right though. That's for sure. It looks like the next Bachelor. Sorry, sorry, babe. She's like, <laughs> she's like giving me the eyes right now. <laughs> like, I mean, do you uh, do you like me? Yes. <laughs> do you get a rose? Yes. Look at that. That's uh, that's great, man. That's um, this one. This is something you. You couldn't pay me enough money to give this away. That's, That's a lot. I'm, I'm very you, cheap. I'm very cheap. You could actually fact, give me. I know for a fact you haven't let your kids touch that yet because the head would be ripped off. Yeah, that's that's actually true. My my three year old would for sure rip the head off. I don't know what that says about you or about him. I'm not sure. Um, you hey, I have, to... I have a question for you. Let's switch this chat up a little bit, Jamie. I don't know um, if I like the way this is going. I love the way this is going. So before we uh, before we played together in Dallas, we uh, we actually played together um, at UNC for a year. Um, and I don't know if you remember this, but when I went on my official visit to UNC, um, <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be a true or false question, okay? Oh boy! When I, when I went on my official visit to UNC, I think I was like 16, 17 years old, coming from residency program, Bradenton. You did the same thing. Um, you know, I was trying to decide on a school and when, when we got recruited as a recruit, whoever the recruit was staying with got a little stipend of money to help, you know, take the recruit out, buy him some food, make sure that he had some stuff to sustain him while he was there. True or false, you took all my recruit money <laughs> and bought beer with it. True or false, you ended up coming to UNC. So whatever I did. <laughs> absolutely are you, worked are you pleading the fifth look i'm obviously clearly i didn't buy it because Why are you so red? i wasn't like any, 17 too but i'm one year older than you are legitimately we both have a birthday coming up in april i'm one year older than you clearly i didn't buy it so false i didn't buy beer with your recruitment money to get you to come to UNC, which successfully worked, it's a, it's by a, the it's, way. It's, it's, it's an actual miracle. I actually made it back to residency in one piece because my diet, that those two days, I think it was saltine crackers. I think you literally only fed me saltine crackers for two days. Times are tough. I let you have all the Lunchables you wanted from my refrigerator in our dorm. So From your mini, from your mini fridge? True or false, you had the time of your life at UNC. False. But I did, go, <laughs> I, I did go to UNC, um, the, best, the best three semesters of my life. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> three semesters and we were gone. But, uh, there, there's some UNC stories I'd love to dive deeper into. I really would. We're running low on time. I, uh, let's, I let's, would... cut, let's cut it off in like 10 minutes. What else you got for me? Okay. So um, along the memorabilia lines, uh, you said you have no shame in asking for jerseys to swap. Um, oh. Best jerseys you've top three jerseys you've ever swapped that you have in your collection. Oh man, 
And is the new house going to have a man cave with the jerseys displayed? The new house is going to have just, just, just nothing like the man cave I had in Chicago, unfortunately. No, it's great. Um, it won't. There is a Bolowich. There is a – real quick, sorry. I, do, I want to hear your story. There's an, uh, there's an Elmar Bolowich shout in the comments. Do you want wow. to give everybody your best Elmar Bolowich, the former coach of UNC, the man with the most thick German accent you've ever heard? Do you want to give a – I do. I do. Uh, Jamie! Okay. <laughs> Leave training right now. Leave training, Jamie. I don't want to see you anymore. Okay, I'll play. I'll play my part. Okay, Elmar, why? That was the worst call you've ever made. <laughs> and he actually threw in a bunch of expletives in there too. I'm just trying to be PC right now. Remember um, when he asked me to get in my car and go home? Uh, yeah, no, he did that every other week. So and I did. I didn't have a car, so that was my right. response. Elmar. Yeah. I don't have a car. What car do you want me to get in and go home? <laughs> I think he told you to jog. I think he told you to jog back to the <laughs> Yeah, the, the practice field is a mile away from campus, by the way. <laughs> so, let's see. Three best jerseys. I mean, dude, this is so diff. I, I, got, I have a lot of good ones. Um, all right. I'm going to go I'm gonna go Pirlo, NYCFC jersey. Um, one Probably of not after that 7-0 game, huh? Yeah, but one- – oh, boy. You didn't say that day, did you? You – you, you're a monster, dude. You just screamed and woke up, woke up, Cal. Good. Do we get a Do we Cal, get a guest appearance? I mean, what do you think? Is it, has he been sleeping long enough? You think he'll go back to sleep, babe? Maybe she'll, maybe she'll go get him. Maybe he'll, maybe Cal will make uh, an appearance. Oh, Cal him. Pirlo. Okay, Pirlo. Uh, Pirlo, NYCFC jersey. I mean, I just had such a, a great respect for him as a midfielder. One of the most elegant players I've ever seen. Um, Zlatan. Ooh, you got it. You traded with him. I got a Zlatan jersey. Um, it was Question: funny Did Zlatan he, get a Dax McCarty I he, jersey? I think after the I think he after the game he thought I was like one of the kids that he walked out with. <laughs> that was like, but then I was like, no, no, I actually played against you, and like you know, I was a captain. We actually walked out next to each other. Can can you just take my jersey? Just just, um, just pretend like you're gonna take mine. Just, just you can give it back pretend, to me. Just pretend, please. Um, you can th- you can throw it to a fan if you want, who will then throw it in the trash. But Zlatan is great. <laughs> he was actually really cool. Um, and then let's see. God, I mean, this is this is difficult, man. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Um, let's see. Old school. I want to go old school. Let's go American. I got a. Uh, I got an old school Chicago Fire Brian McBride jersey. Me and Brian. Oh. McBride, Brian McBride was our our captain at the Olympics. And Brian's a guy who I had a ton of respect for. Um, I still do. And being on the fire uh, for three years and realizing, you know, how great of a player he was and how big of an impact he had at that club was really cool. So I'll go Brian McBride. Yeah, he's an absolute stud. Brian McBride, one of the best to do it. I um, I actually have my favorite jersey with me right now. <laughs> you, <coughs> well, would you like you to don't, see it? You don't, you don't say. You would you like to see it? I, I would. This is my favorite jersey. Is it a Jamie Watson jersey? Good. An FC Dallas Jamie Watson jersey. You don't remember when we oh. traded jerseys? Of course I remember. Is it is it mine? Turn it around. No, you're right. It's actually my jersey. This is my <laughs> favorite. <one. laughs> Absolutely. See, but see, this is you how, took, you, you this killed is how I, you killed this is me. How I know you too well. It's just it's too easy. Actually, <laughs> there it is. There it is. Number lucky thirteen, huh? Lucky hey, thirteen. Dude, if you get if you get really close to that little C. You'll see that they didn't even make little C's, and and our kit guy actually had to cut two, um, I think it was two big C's in half, and like really stitch it together. You see that line down the middle? Yeah, there is it right there, actually. See that? That's actually really impressive, Marcus. Little, little touches from Marcus the Goat. Love Marcus, Marcus. Owens, one, one of the favorite, best ever. One of my favorite kit men I ever had. Do you want to tell people um, that it was uh, it was really cool that you actually took my number thirty one? <laughs> and in honor, you were number thirteen because obviously you couldn't wear the same number as me. So you 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 remember telling me that story one day that you did that backwards for me? I don't. You were uh, I believe you got to Dallas after I did. So that's interesting. Oh, hi, big boy. Oh, here we go. All right, if he cries, the lives about to get good here. We caught we we cut his nap off really really early. Like he's gonna uh, uh, if he You're cries it's, 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 if he cries it's because he sees Jamie. Oh, 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 I know, bud. It's Jamie. I'm sorry. Hello. He 
He's like, where's my bottle? Here, I'll get his bottle. We're like, I'm oh. sorry, Jamie's really ugly, I know. But I know, it's so, no, no, it was, he was fine with Jen. That's so weird. He got in your arms and he cried. It's because he saw you. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny, now that we've seen Callum, um, I actually have a, a fan question right here that I need to, to ask you. It's from um, uh, Callum W. Uh, in Minnesota. Hey, Cal. Is that, is, wanted... that not, is that not the best looking little nap face? Look at him. Hi, say Aww. hi. Callum. Say hi, hi buddy. buddy. I know Jamie's tough to look at. Uh, hi. He's tough to look at. I'm sorry. I know. You, you got a lot of adversity in life having Dax as your daddy, don't you? <laughs> Well, you're going to do you wanna, fine. You, you want to keep doing this? I can do this all day, buddy. I don't want to do this because I know you don't have any standards. You'll say mean things. I will you say don't. whatever I need to say, all right? Yeah, so Callum Williams in uh, Minnesota, good friend of ours. He wanted to uh, to ask, where did the name Callum come from? Oh, I knew it. I knew it. You know, it's because I, whenever I watched the broadcast, um, Minnesota United broadcast, I would always, whenever you would come on, I would, <laughs> I would mute. <laughs> because it was like it was honestly like someone was like stabbing my ears with a fork, so I'd put you're in luck mute. this year, pal. That's why I'm watching all of these <laughs> on mute. Uh, but yeah, no, Cal, Cal, he has a very soothing voice. We did not name Callum after him. Um, my wife and I, you know, we both are from like traditional like English, Irish, Scottish heritage. You don't say. Rounds. I know you. It's hard to believe, um, but. Uh, we were trying to narrow a few names down, and it has zero significance to anyone in our life. It's just we really love the name Callum McCarty, and he looks like a – Callum is just like a really strong, strong name, and he's like a really strong boy. Look at this kid. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Already walking. He's not even a year old. 11 months, baby. Wow. When did, so when is his birthday? When does he turn one? I already got him in the weight room. Um, April 18th. April 18th, 2019 is when my life changed forever. Becoming a dad, oh, you know, you know, you know this dude, becoming a dad is like, is like nothing you can experience. It's way more important than anything you'll ever accomplish on the soccer field or in your work or business life. Um, gives you a real renewed sense of purpose and understanding of, of what it means to be unselfish. I was always a selfish person before this. Now I, I'm very unselfish. Yeah, and and it, in a weird way, obviously nobody wants to be in the situation of uh, where we are now. Um, right. But with with being kind of in this lockdown, this social distancing, it's given you a little bit more time with them in the hey. midst of what you thought would be the season. Has that been a nice yeah. surprise? It's been amazing, dude. It's been amazing. Hey, Jamie, let me ask you a question. Okay. When you look at this belly, do you see <laughs> your belly? <laughs> Similarities are stunning. Um, Do you see your belly in that belly? Yep, here we are. I'm just nope, comparing no myself abs. to an 11 month old belly. Nope, no abs and very pale. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, bro? What do you think? Ka hey, Callum, that kid is so cute. Can we just have the, the camera on him the rest of the time? <laughs> yeah, we can. Look at him, Callum. What do you think, bud? What what's, think? what's on the menu for Callum today? It's literally just pasta. delicious pasta with uh, a little <laughs> It's chickpea pasta. Chickpea pasta. There he is. All right, well, we're look. Real, we're, real, we're real healthy around these parts. You, uh, you've got some, some dadding to do. Um, we're not going to have Jen continue to be uh, the solo parent here. We're going to make you have to uh, get off of this and get off your, your butt and go help uh, right. as a dad. I, I feel bad. I feel bad that I, I got a lot of Alan Gordon questions and a lot of Alan Gordon stories in my in the mentions in the comments I saw them um, I will give a quick Alan Gordon story um, Alan he, Gordo lived with me for about three months um, during that 2018 season um, give some context Alan Gordon was played in the league for probably about 15 years I mean he was at the time he was living with you he was how old uh Gordo's about 45 now, I think. So he was like, at the time, he's probably like 40. Um, a wife, three kids that were still in Denver. They were still in Denver, and he was staying at a buddy's place, funny enough. And his buddy's wife just gave birth. And once she gave birth, she was basically just like, you got to go. Like, yeah. I just had a newborn, you're out. Like, I don't need this, like, squatter staying on my, on my couch while I so have you, So you, you adopted so I, I, Alan I, I, Gordon. I saved him. I took him in under my wing. We Kept him off the streets. Time. I, yeah, kept <laughs> Kept him off, kept him out of trouble. Um, I taught him basically how to play darts. Uh, we played horse. We played basketball all the time. 
Like, we just had a lot of fun games going, you know. And I was usually, most of the time, better than him. He got ended up getting a little bit better at darts. But one night, we had a great win, a uh, great win in Chicago. I forgot who we beat, but we had a, we had a good night out. Everyone had a little bit of an after party at the, uh, at the house. And it was about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and we go with, like, a few – I think it was actually the Atlanta United game because I remember Dan Gargan – was uh, Dan Gargan was over and he came and he joined us and my dad was in town. It was just a wonderful, it was a wonderful group to be honest. We were all uh, we were all out pretty late. We would go back to my house. There was a basketball court across the street from me and we go and we play knockout. We play knockout. <laughs> At what like time was this? Five or six of us, eh, two two three o'clock in the morning, give or take the hour. I don't know. And and Gordo proceeds to lose almost every single game of knockout and then he starts complaining that his back's hurting and so he goes and, he <laughs> out. and he's like oh, i got back surgery like last year and it's late and i didn't warm up properly and and it was just a real weak move on his part because he's so bad <laughs> at knockout um but i tell you what really great guy always offered to do the dishes after dinner um so i can't totally disparage him he was a better guest than i was at your house that's what you're saying yeah, I'll take that 20 bucks any, any day now. It's in the mail, pal. It's in the mail. <laughs> hey, look, Dax, we want to say thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. If we're, uh, if we're not up to much uh, next week, if not much changes from now until next week, okay. want to do, wanna do it, it again? Let's do it. Why not? Let's hop there on. We, go. I got, we got many more stories. Maybe we can focus on you, a little bit more on you and your, your uh, nomadic career. I just checked my schedule. I'm actually really busy next week, so let's cancel on those plans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dax, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for following along for all the comments, the questions leading up to it. Uh, Dax, I'll give you the final word to all the uh, Nashville SC fans that are watching. Say bye, bye. Uh, okay, Nashville SC fans, this is the legend. Thank you guys for following along. We cut his nap short for you guys. Um, thanks, guys. Stay safe. Stay sanitized. Bye, Callum. Bye, Dax. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Everyone stay safe. Everyone inside. And we'll see you soon. Thanks, Dax. See you, buddy. Bye.